you know, our industry is so important um, to get ourselves out of this economic downturn. Um, it's crucial in terms of infrastructure spend to create a modern economy, to create jobs. <clears throat> if anybody's going to get us, get the 29% down to 5%, the in construction industry is going to play a very big role. Um, so <clears throat> we really need an icon, and <clears throat> she was an icon of the industry, especially over the last ten, um, the last twenty years. Um, we all started to see her leadership, and she was so important to take us now further at <clears throat> the very time we need her. Um, from the industry point of view, you know she was amazing. Phenomenal, as, as you say. Um, she she had time for everyone. She not just women in construction, but obviously she played a big role in, in BBC and also in SAFSEC, MBSA, the Construction Charter Council. Um, she just had time for everyone <clears throat> and a, a, amazing energy um, to have a meeting at half past six or seven o'clock in the morning when she was travelling from Midrand was no problem at all. Um, and. Uh, and then, of course, um, moving down the industry to, to Matea, um, you know, <coughs> Tim and um, Justine and everyone, I'm, I'm just so sorry about it. I know how proud she was of Matea Construction. Um, <coughs> we were very proud to be involved with their growth in terms, um, obviously, spurred on by the VRP, which Paula does have its advantages. Um, but, you know, I think the industry needed some really big grade nines. You know, Tandy always said grade nines one thing, but you've got to be able to do some big things as grade nine contractors. And I think her company was heading that way, and, and, and we'll get there, I've got no doubt. And um, we'll, carry, we'll carry on what we're doing, Tim, in her name and her spirit. Um, and then finally, just personally, <coughs> um, at, my, <coughs> at my age, I would <coughs> love to have spent more time with her. I would like to have spent more golf with her. I was always amazed how good she was at golf. She didn't have much time, but boy, she could hit the ball. And, um, you know, just have the privilege to be with such a um, privileged person. But, you know, Tim, at the end of your corridor, you've, there's that beautiful portrait of Tandy in blue. And, um, and I'm sure she's, her spirit will be with us all um, as we really take further what she started in really integrating this industry and allowing this industry to become part of our future and part of <coughs> the solution to the many problems we have. Um, may her soul rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, whilst I call upon Mr. Roy Muniz, the Executive Director at Master Builders South Africa, just to remind you all that tomorrow there is the official uh, memorial uh, service.
to say that uh, Master Dada South Africa is very much devastated by the passing of uh, Dr. T. I am aware and know very well that uh, this is not the time to mourn, as uh, speakers have been indicating, but to celebrate the life and the contribution of uh, Dr. T. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I personally did not know Dr. T up until I joined Master Builder South Africa. That was in 2015. I had, had, I had read about her here and there, but I didn't know her that well. And when I went to MBSA, I remember on my first day, it was early in the morning, got to the office, I was shown my office, I got there, you know, looked around for, you know, things that you check when you get to a new office. You know, a mini bar here, some of the things. There was no mini bar. You know, the office was clean, clean cabinets. On my left hand side, there was a very nice painting, a nice frame painting, painting. And on my right hand side, there was a certificate of recognition. That certificate of recognition, recognition was recognizing uh, the sterling work that uh, Master Builder South Africa has been doing in recognizing uh, the women in construction. And that certificate was signed by Saudi President at the time, Dr. T. Glover. So my chairperson came to introduce me to the staff, introduce me to the staff. And uh, after that, I said to him, hey, Mr. Chair, just give me names of few people that I need to meet in the industry. And my chairman said, oh, okay, I think you should meet, uh, do you know Dr. Glover? Because I heard about you. He said, okay, Dr. Glover is one of the people that you need to meet. He mentioned some unknown leaders, but uh, it was Dr. Glover that, you know, he mentioned first. So, okay, that was it. I went to my colleague and I said to him, he has been there before me, and I said to him, I'm new here, I'd like to, you know, meet some uh, people. And he said, you know, other than meeting the government and making sure that we are being paid as the industry, as the contractors, go and meet Dr. T. And it was when I met Dr. T that I realized there was a reason why they said I must go and meet Dr. T. For those of you who have not had an opportunity to meet Dr. T, don't take our words for it. Just, okay, not check your phones, but when you go out, just tune in. I mean, any radio station, you will hear a lot of South Africans, other than those that are asking questions about what happened at the airport. Most of the people will be talking about the contribution that uh, Dr. T has made to the industry and to this country. I wrote something that I wanted to read for you, but in the interest of time, I will not uh, be doing that. But I want to say, as other speakers have indicated, uh, the one lesson that I've learned from Dr. T was that in life, you don't take more than you give. And I don't need to say a lot of things around that. I think uh, Dr. Wiley has indicated something along those lines. And uh, in closing, I just want to borrow um, one of the memory tech lines from Power FM that goes, rest in power, Dr. T. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm also thanking you in power. And while I call upon Ms. Nongulu Yagosindani from the chairperson of the Construction Industry Development Board, I'm going to request that we please beam the notice for the memorial service as well as the funeral so that people are able to take the details, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I observe all the protocols. I just want to start by saying when you focus on being a blessing, God makes sure that you are always blessed in abundance. So says Joel Austin. And Austandi was blessed in abundance. And that's because her full mission in life was being a blessing to others. 
Good morning, everyone. And I particularly wish to greet um, the board um, of uh, the CIDB, um, Mr. Masimini. <laughs> and I'd like to also obviously greet uh, the chairperson of BBCDE and otherwise all protocols observed. Dr. T was a wonderful person. She was sharing, she was big, she was larger than life and yet humble. And so we as the industry lost tremendously and in that loss, in that loss, we are also very happy that we had an opportunity to have an opportunity to share with her. Now, as a giver, which I've already indicated, uh, there are assignments that are big and there are assignments that are small. And sometimes uh, people who are successful, as successful as she was, would look at, at an assignment and say, I won't do this assignment, it's beneath me. The CITB recently advertised um, for a, a team to come and do an assessment of the past five years of the CITB, just to check whether the CITB is still on track, have we done the things we said we were going to do. Now that assignment generally would not have attracted a person of the caliber of Dr. T. But guess what? She was part of it. And we are very proud that she gave us that opportunity. Because when we talk about things, sometimes we have to bring them down to practical reality, just so that we, we, we give a sense of who the person was. I am very honored as Nungululek, as a person, to have had few minutes from time to time of her counsel uh, to me because obviously it's better when a woman tells another woman of what this industry looks like. And I'm grateful that she was a player in this industry, a, a big player that enabled many women, and, and of course there are still many women who are still going to come, not having had an opportunity to meet her, but just hearing the power that she had. She had this magnet of pulling people together and of drawing attention to the issues of this industry. For that I thank her deeply. I also thank her family very deeply uh, because it is because of her family that she had this strength. I thank them deeply and I really do want to extend our condolences um, to the family and to all the structures that she represented. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker, uh, after we get another item, will be um, the President of Presidents. Uh, Manzi is Sandy Zoom, the President of uh, the BBC. See, the BBC is big, it's bigger than the President of the President of the country because it's business. You know, business is big. Uh, why does a person you tell he has a job, he has a job, because you know, I didn't have to sell this number. Now, now, as I want to send the things, I can say, I can say, I can say, I can say, can I call upon uh, uh, the choir, and then after that, uh, once in, thank you. Baya Sibusa, Bapite, Basite, Tule, Yeah. 
thank you to the uh, program directors, Chriselda and Conan. They're doing a fantastic job. Uh, I'll, I'll shoot straight to the point. I know what DSG went to. Um, needs to leave as soon as she has spoken. Uh, so I won't delay that moment. Uh, there are just two aspects of uh, Dr. T that I want to focus on. Um, there's an array of speakers. There's no point in me in telling everything, because I'm sure uh, various aspects of her life will be covered along the way. One really relates to the choices that uh, old Dr. T made. You know, black business is a very cold space. For some of us who operate in that space, we know it very well. And for people who have got a choice to be outside that space, some of them choose to be outside of the space. Because number one, um, you don't um, get second guessed. In black business, we are second guessed about our intentions, what we stand for. And some of us frown upon us simply because we continue to call ourselves black. They'll prefer that you be called something else. Uh, for someone like Dr. T, who had struggle credentials like no other, having served in the MK and having earned a profession as a medical practitioner, having worked in the field in Orange Farm, or Orange Farm, she could have chosen now is my time to eat and forget about all of this and serve on the boards of Wilson Bailey, Holmes, um, large corporations, multinationals, and have a peacetime dividend. She chose not to. She chose to entrench herself in our ranks and be brutalized like we are. Uh, she chose an industry which is very hard, construction. Where, when you talk about uh, late payments to service providers, it's in the construction industry. You have seen a lot of people going to liquidation. She chose that as a site of struggle. We salute her for that. Because she could have chosen to be anywhere else and become um, a director on board of this AP, like we know. And no, 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 no attempt at uh, impugning the reputation of those necessarily. But it's a choice that she made, and I always say uh, she died with a spear of black business in her hand. And she deserves all the glory that we as black business can, can unleash and uh, throw at her. The last point um, would be a focus on her as a mother. Often than not, when people depart, the focus is on that eminent personality. Of course, we know she didn't die alone. There were three other people, at least, who perished in the accident. They have names, they have families, they have got loved ones, and we're not focusing on them, not because they are just statistics. But one aspect that is often forgotten is the family. The children, sisters, brothers, siblings, aunties, and all that. I witnessed um, Utandi on the field, very busy as she was. We were both parents at Hilton College. I think our children were there around about the same time, maybe has a year or two ahead of mine, but there were years of commonality. Whenever there was a um, rugby match, soccer match, on weekends, Dr. T was there to urinate and cheer her boys on. And it is those kind of qualities that we want to inculcate among our leaders, that please don't forget that we are family members as well. And in as much as you are celebrated, you are elevated, you are heaped with awards, and please forget all of that, because you are a mother, you are a father, you have got people who look up to you. With those few words, I say, Dr. T, rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, President or my presidents. Uh, that's how we roll with Dr. T. I'd like to quote some weight, open quote. To live my life to the fullest and experience the experience each day as it were my last, knowing that nothing is impossible to touch each soul that I encounter as I journey through life. 
We are all made in the image of God. Close quote, Dr. Tandi Sylvia Grove. That's the kind of woman that we're celebrating this morning. I'd like to now call upon Imbogo to Malibongwe. Kamalama Kosigas. Our business people, you don't know this expression. Malibongwe. Kamalama Kosigas. Thank you. Ms. Jess Chesme. There's no way I cannot mention that name. Uh, Duato, who is African National Congress's Deputy Secretary General. And Sizoy Lumis, and next will be saying President of the African National Congress. Thank you very much and good morning. Um, firstly, let me ask the NEC of the ANC's deepest condolences to the family, friends, board members, and of our Mbokoto flower of our revolution, Comrade Tandi. Um, yesterday we were still trying to understand what we had lost, many of us. So it's a moment of celebration, but it's also a moment to reflect our own sadness at a great loss. Um, many of us met Comrade Tandi, and we know her as Mavis Twala. She was the Administrative Secretary of the Women's Section in Lusaka. So if you were involved in the women's movement internally, this was your contact in Lusaka. She worked with Gertrude Chope, she arranged all our meetings, she would instruct where we would meet and when we would meet and so on. And that, that connection was never ever known to anybody because Tandy was solid. She didn't believe in gossiping or adding issues that weren't necessary to be added. She was not adventurous, she was planning. She was a planning person. She, um, I would say she's, she believed in the theory of completeness. The job is not done until it's done. And even if it is done, it has to be done properly so that it should never be redone. And I think that to us, many of us who had the privilege of getting to know this remarkable South African woman. I have to say that um, where does Tandy's beginnings come from? And I'd like to say a bit about that because I've read through all the tweets and Twitters and people are not saying that this was an MK soldier who trained for three years in southern Angola in a camp. And when she completed that training, she was sent for further training to Moscow. Um, and so she was a completely trained ANC cadre by the time she came home in 1990. And what did she choose to do after she completed her medical degree? To go to orange farms where the poorest people were living, um, who had no proper homes. And her, her, her belief was that if you build proper housing for people, their health situation will improve. That's the kind of person that she was. The cause of the ill health was infirm housing, precarious housing, housing that burnt down in winter, that was cold in winter and created problems for people. That was the Mavis that we know. Very complete inner thinking. Nothing left to chance. Nothing left to a question at the end. There, could, there should be questions left to be asked. There must be answers to every point. So Comrade Tandi to us is a, is a great loss. Um, I know that other comrades from MK will speak, other flowers of the re revolution will speak, but I just want to say to you that, you know, when we lose somebody of this caliber, it's very hard. Um, and we can only hope that what Tandi has left behind in Sawik, Saweed, and in the construction industry will grow and that other women will reach that particular level that she has, 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 has reached. Um, the industry is still very male-dominated. Um, and I always remember Tandi's words at a policy conference was, the earth never moves itself unless there's an earthquake. And women have to be like an earthquake. If you want the earth to move, you've got to create earthquake conditions in an industry that is stubborn and won't move on its own. 
then you must do it for them. Uh, and that also goes for the industry that must be owned by black South Africans, frankly speaking. This is not a country. We're not living in Europe. We live in Africa. And it is honestly, there's, there's no need for us to apologize, uh, Comrade Zandile, for what should be the right thing to do. And what I loved about Tandi was, she didn't need to be held behind her back by anyone else. It was the worth of her own hands that pushed her forward. And I think that's a very important lesson. I'd like to end by just thanking you for giving us this small space. We did ask that Comrade Tandi be specially honored by the government and she is being given a special funeral, um, provincial. Um, and, and we're very grateful to the government for doing that uh, because she deserved it. Thank you very much. Thank you and Amandla, our dearest Tandi. Rest in peace. Malibombo kwa kona, ika malamatu wa skaz. XQ, I thought I'd just do some comradeship since we just had a comrade and wear my glasses. Was Uchi, you are not alone, Mama. The struggle continues, says Kulil. I'd like to now call upon representing the Black Business Council, the Secretary General, Ms. Judy, no Wedi, no Kedi. Um, I remember many times, each time a program director introduces you, but I do know Wedi. It's not the Sutu version. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for coming through. Followed uh, swiftly by Ms. Nongolulego Sindane, uh, representing the Construction Industry Development Board as chairperson. Thank you very much. And um, I think, Comrade Jesse, you, you've just unnerved all of us, taking us right back to the south of Angola, Camp 13. Um, one of the things that you may or may not know is that Tandi could also have chosen to be an opera singer. She had the most incredible voice for those of you who have been exposed to her voice. And um, good morning, colleagues, comrades, family united through the DNA of Dr. Tandi. And there are two songs that came to my mind um, when I sort of reluctantly heard that, reluctantly thought that I shouldn't speak. And the two songs were, um, How Do You Mend a Broken Heart? For those of the sisters in the room, some of you will know exactly what I mean by that. And with the use of the song, How Do You Mend a Broken Heart? And then, of course, the other song that just brings uh, Sistandi's life to me is um, There's Music in the Air. Whenever I would see her, I would hear that song and that beautiful letter singing it, and then she would sing along together. So I'm not going to say much around the role of T in, in business, the Black Business Council, and everything that we've done together, because I think our president, uh, you have so rightfully accurately portrayed um, Dr. T, and more importantly, that when there was a contestation and she was not elected, she would say, how can I serve? And that's another attribute that I think we have lost as leaders in business. And so I'm going to very quickly talk about, for those dead, our dead. When you get the nomination, the award, the promotion, Think about the ones who died. And Sisti was always about context. Remember where we've come from. We did not arrive today. When you are at the reception, on the delegation, on the commission, think about the ones who died. When you have won the vote and the crowd congratulates you, think about the ones who died and the ones you need to put forward because you too will die. And these were words that were shared by Nana. We are known as the Three Musketeers, myself, Nana, and Kawi, with uh, Tandi, the great hero in the Dumas story about the Three Musketeers. So for the young people in the room, Dr. T also believed in reading. Please go and read that seminal work by Dumas, because it really captures the spirit of Dr. T. And I can go on and on about 
uh, this particular uh, Spanish work by Jonathan Cohen. But I want to just come towards the end of this beautiful poem because so much of it is about sis, sis, uh, Dr. T. When you become the one who gives out certificates, orders, permission, think about the ones who died. When the little old lady comes to you with a problem, her little piece of land, think about the ones who died. See them without their shirts being dragged, gushing blood, wearing hoods, blown to pieces, submerged in tubs, getting electric shocks, their eyes gouged out, their throats cut, riddled with bullets, because this is what the struggle was all about. So, uh, Dr. T always remembered them. You represent them, the ones who died, and those that you now will delegate to take over from the ones who died. Dr. T and I crossed paths in Orange Farm. She had a practice in Orange Farm. I had built the Love Life Y Center. And what united us was she was always looking at what we believed in in terms of the AMC primary health care and the Alma Atta, that health care is an outcome. And therefore, you've got to get the water right, the sanitation right, the garbage right, etc. And we would joke because I grew up in a community where we were removed, where we had no water and we had no toilets. So I knew exactly how you need to, what you need to deal with in order to uh, make sure that there is not ill health. So I'm not going to go on and on, but I just want to say that on Friday, a few of us got together and we wanted to have a very small celebration. This is Friday the 23rd. And Dr. T as was part of an indomitable Indomitable spirit, when I had put out a call, can we have lunch to just celebrate you? She said, no, we're going to celebrate another woman and another woman. And it was then uh, Nana and Kawi said, look, it's, it's, it's not a, a request, it is a, it is a command, an instruction. We will celebrate you. So I said to Dr. T, who do you want me to bring to this lunch? And I, I don't mean to leave anyone out, but these were the ladies Dr. T wanted around this little table. It was Louisa, Granny, Gloria, Irene, Daphne, Namonde, and Precious. And then she said, and Judy, invite whoever you wish to after that. What then transpired was that every woman that sat at that table, um, and they were sharing the, um, the pictures there, every woman was interconnected in one way or another. Quite remarkably, either through a death, through a child, through a loved one, but we were all connected. And Dr. T arrived, she had done a nail, she said, I've done my nails, I've done my toes, because you ladies are all so phenomenal, and I put a flower in my hair, just the most beautiful friend, Japani. And we shared stories, such amazing stories. And one of the things that we were very clear about is that too often, we are accused as black women of not supporting, of not promoting, of not caring about other black women. And we really have to get rid of that horrible untruth because it's not true that we don't pull each other down. And a lot of women want to share a narrative that distorts who we are as black women in particular, that we are out there for ourselves. And Sis T said, Dr. T said, that of course it's important to create wealth but it is important to create wealth so that you can share the wealth because what is poverty? If you can't share the wealth, we don't get rid of the poverty. And she knew what purpose meant, what passion meant. And we can all go on and on, but as she brought that music in the room, the music in the air with that radiant smile and that deep laugh of hers, this is the message she sent at 10 o'clock on Friday night. And little did we know that that may be one of the last messages that we would receive. Okay, everybody. My feet are still dangling above the ground. Thank you, dear sisters, Judy Kawe and Nana. Today's event to honor me was by far one of the happiest days of my life. To have a room of women, black business women, sharing our stories of a fine wine, food, fellowship, in the way we did, could only be described as a result of a profound act of love. Thanks a million, my sisters, and to this group of boys that we hang around with, because they always remain boys, even though that they are grown men and all are older than us. We have to remind them that sometimes men need to grow up because women grow up very early in life. Sorry, brothers, you missed out, but you were well represented. Dr. T, the mother, the sister, the comrade, the chosen one, the hero, 
fasty, fearless, and all about the future. I think the shock of your death has not quite hit us. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. I remember a moment um, there where somebody started, Igamal, and she was like, not that one, please. <laughs> and, wow, an outspoken, very loving soul who spoke her truth. And I guess the challenge is with each and every one of us, what do we stand for? What are we going to be known for? At this moment, I'd like to just make an appeal, a humble request, a humble appeal that also Sandy would have wanted me to mention. Um, just sharing some of the moments that we shared with her. Uh, she was very excited amongst the very few or many South Africans who were excited when I got married. She was at my wedding and when I announced that it has since collapsed, the first call, one of the first calls I received was from her. And, and she said, you take away being a strong woman, allow yourself to cry. And uh, an appeal to sisters today to please give yourself moments to cry. An appeal to my brothers today, you can do better. You can do better by women. We, we have birthed you. We are your sisters, your daughters, your mothers. You can do better in treating us. You can do better in taking care of our hearts. I made a mistake and called someone who has spoken already. It seems like Siakuba for sure. I think we deserve a round of applause. Mr. X, Q, and I said, push a little of one. If I don't need how trade much. I would like to call upon uh, representing the Council uh, for the Built Environment Acting Chairperson, uh, Ms. Mapifo Mokoti. Thank you. Thank you. Program um, director. Technology. Sometimes we have to abide. Greetings to everyone in the house. Um, greetings family and colleagues. All protocol observed. From the CBE, we appreciate this moment that you have given us. I would say that it, was, it is really sad and hard to believe that Dr. T is gone. Just the other day at the BBCB conference, we greeted and chatted. Little did I know that this was the last time that we would talk. Last month, Sir so ushered in the Women's Month the period of one of their leaders. And we are meeting this same woman's month with the death of another. It is hard not to wail when you miss the soldiers that never missed their targets. As women in this industry, we have lost and it's not an easy period to swallow. From the CBE, we are saying we are deeply shocked of this great loss. We are saying to the family, please take comfort in knowing that you are not alone. We are also deeply grieved because we have lost one of our own. Our thoughts are with you. May the peace which comes from the memories of love shared comfort you now and in the days ahead. May you find peace and love in the memories you cherished. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, garrison you today and always. Remember that the Lord will always be your shepherd, a strong tower to whom you should always run to in the time of need. To Samuel, BBCB and the industry, we say that we have lost as a whole. 
one of our great leaders, a soldier amongst Lord soldiers, not only a soldier in MK, but we know that the built environment is like a war zone. And this is one soldier that never missed her target. And today she is gone. We have lost an advocate, a mentor, a pioneer, a pace setter, an entrepreneur, and a bold, brave, fearless, strong, a colleague, and a friend. No doubt, a huge gap has been created in your organization as SAWIC, in BBCBE, in the industry as a whole. But she has not left us empty-handed. She left us with a legacy, a baton that another must become and run with. What remains, Oksana, is that whatever we are confronted with, we must face with utmost strength and unwavering conviction of victory at all fronts. Long live the spirit of the Tati. Long live. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Lesas Ms. Katifish. Uh, I'm going to just call the choir to just one, one item while I call the following three people in succession. Uh, Mr. Ephraim Molenzani from Association of Black Securities and Investment Professionals, Deputy Treasurer General. And then Ms. Daly, uh, sorry, Mr. Isaac Ngozi, the South African Council for Projects and Construction Management Professions, is a president. And then followed by Mr. Webster Feather, CEO of South African Forum for Civil Engineering Contractors, C this is a CEO, Mabona de Napa, who had a summit in construction. Yawa, yawa, let's go! Mr.
Tewo Group uh, colleagues, Honorable Minister, uh, the President of the Black Business Council, Presidents of uh, Black Business Council affiliate bodies, uh, the DSG of the African National Congress, the senior pastor and the leadership of the church, and all distinguished guests uh, on protocol observed. A warm greetings from the Association of Black Securities and Investment Professionals, uh, President and the National Executive Committee, and the membership base. Today is a very sad day, not only for Dr. T's family, but for South Africa as a whole. The Association of Black Securities and Investment Professionals uh, is saddened by the untimely death of one of the country's bright and shining stars, Dr. T. On behalf of the Epson family, I would like to extend our heartfelt sympathies and condolences to the family of Dr. T, as well as uh, all the business associates. As EPSIMP, we interacted with Dr. T at the Black Business Council Federation <coughs> during her tenure as the president of the Black Business Council in the, in the built environment. As EPSIMP, we remember Dr. T for being a strong advocate for transformation and fearlessly championing the interests of the marginalized groups within the construction and built environment space by ensuring that there is affordable housing for the poor, job creation, mentoring of youth and women within the construction industry. We are inspired by the passion and the love that Dr. T had for her people and the work that she was doing. We have indeed lost an exceptional South African, a true, a true heroine, a, a true role model, a woman of substance, Womanda. Only our maker knows why he had to take uh, Dr. T at this uh, time when the country, her family and company needed her the most. But I suppose our maker was in need of much more deserving company to join amongst the angels in the heavenly realms. Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me, but unto all them that love his appearing. Indeed, Dr. T fought a good fight and finished the course. To the family and friends and colleagues, we know the pain of losing a mother. May God Almighty heal your broken hearts and fill Fill them with the warmth and the love during this difficult period. As EPSIP, we like to make a call to all the young people to learn from positive role models such as Dr. T and strive for excellence in their pursuits and not only be self-serving but also uplift the communities that they come from. We would also like to make a call to business uh, community to upscale their investment in youth-owned and women-owned businesses and also support organizations uh, that support uh, the advocacy work of transformation, uh, such as the Black Business Council Federation and its affiliate bodies, so that we may all have a truly inclusive, transformed economy where poverty is eliminated and the standard of living of each South African is increased. EPSIP would like to thank Dr. T for her selflessness and contribution towards the empowerment of youth, women, and marginalized communities. May Dr. T's legacy live forever. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. As, as we said, we followed by uh, Mr. Isaac Nkosu. with uh, 
Dr. Dr. T, we used to call her Sister Andy. I met Sister Andy in 2006. We went together on a project um, when I headed a construction company. And for me, I learned from her more by what she did than what she said. On that particular, in that particular instance, she walked away from the project because there was too many issues. And issues that would border on compromising everyone. And I learned a very big lesson which I had to relate to her a year later when we went on yet another project. It's her wisdom, her knowledge. And she could relate to anyone. So for me, that stood out to be a defining moment in my profession as well. Because I also walked away from that business. I stand here before you this afternoon as a representative of the SSCPCMP to join the business fraternity in celebrate, uh, celebrating a life of a very remarkable lady, Dr. Tandy Grove. She has left a huge emptiness in all of us who loved her. Many who were her friends, and even more, those who heard about her passion to venture into construction. Allow me to express, on behalf of the SSCPCMP, our deepest and sincere condolences to the Mbogu family, directors and staff of Motel Construction Group, and colleagues from the Construction and Broader Business Fraternity. May the Lord continue strengthening you and comforting you all as we move forward with our Dr. Tandy. Allow me also to express my gratitude for her generosity with her time, her energy, her passion, and her wisdom. Sister Andy provided invaluable support to so many people and organizations. We at the SSCPCMP will bear testimony to this, as last year, just last year, not only did her company provide financial support in a form of sponsorship the seventh construction management summit, but she also gave a very insightful presentation on the topic entitled What Role Should the Construction Industry Play in Attracting New Graduates to the Industry? Her presentation was not only stimulating and thought provoking, but there was thoughtfulness in both formulating the presentation and delivering it. As she also had a passion for skills development, she promoted this through the establishment of Motel Academy, which she founded. I have no doubt that we will remember Dr. T, or Sis Tandy, as a woman not only who was a pioneer in the construction industry, but one with unmatched skill, formidable accomplishments, and one who acted with love in her heart for the citizenry of our country. We therefore convey our heartfelt condolences to the family at large, the Dobus and their business colleagues, and all those that have been touched by her, and, uh, her untimely passing away. She will indeed live on in our hearts forever. Hambakat is standing. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. As indicated, uh, and uh, Mr. Mfebe, you are the next one, and then you will be followed by uh, Mr. McClinsey Banda, who is uh, speaking on behalf of Dr. Snowy Kosa, who is the Begging Group uh, CEO. Mr. Sibanda uh, uh, is the Managing Director. Over to you, sir. In and I'm going to 
says donors take scores of our points of country. Program director, the presiding pastor, government leaders elected and appointed, leaders of organized business, fellow mourners at large. Today we are all conglomerated here in love and memory of Dr. T, a sister, a mother, a grandmother, a friend, a colleague, a professional, an MK veteran, a true patriot, pioneer, intellectual, philanthropist, spiritual being, gallant fighter for socioeconomic justice, community and nation builder, and most importantly, a leader extraordinary. Indeed, the old adage that says man proposes and God disposes holds true here due to the circumstances under which Dr. Tandinlov abruptly departed our world without notice as we had a plethora of plans with her. Today, Dr. T was confirmed to attend our subset council meeting, the highest decision-making structure in between AGMs, starting at 10 o'clock at Sussex House in Bedford View, as planned long ago. But we never, in our widest dream, thought that her memorial service would start at the same time and being referred to as the late Dr. T. Her chair in our council meeting remained unoccupied with a bunch of fresh flowers on it I have brought along, which was a very sad moment for us to have an empty chair with this a bunch of flowers. I therefore take this opportunity on behalf of SAFSEC to convey our heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family, friends, business colleagues, and business colleagues at large. Having personally known Dr. T for a very long time, among other occasions, I will never forget the robust encounter we had at the ANC 53rd elective conference in Mangawo at the Progressive Business Forum Maki in December 2012, when I told her that, with effect from 1st January 2013, I would take over as the CEO of SAFSEC with a clear mandate to turn around the industry body. She told me in no uncertain terms that she wouldn't understand why a person of my caliber would join such a discredited and untransformed organization such as SAFSEC, which in her view was irredeemable because it drove the former incumbent, a black female, Ms. Linda Wemiataza, into tears and a near state of depression. I quickly retorted that, as you know me, Dr. T, a person is not yet born who can drive me into such a situation, and I further shared with him my strategy which included constitutional changes to, the, to guarantee irrevocable transformation, and she reluctantly accepted the explanation and said she would continue watching my turnaround strategy. Fast forward towards our SAFSEC National Conference in 2016, which takes place annually every October. I approached her to avail herself as the first African female president since its establishment in 1939. She turned me down and said, wait until 2019 and come back to me when SAFSEC reaches its 80th anniversary. She told me that she was, however, elated to be part of an industry board like SAFSEC with inter alia and established bargaining council for civil engineering contractors, although she would remain in other black lobby organizations. At the, 20, at the 2016 SAFSEC conference, she was elected to the SAFSEC council after she had this to, after which she had this to say, as reported in an article 
by Construction Engineering News on 25th November 2016, uh, uh, titled Dr. Tandi Ndlovu elected to Safsec Council. I quote, Dr. Ndlovu, CEO from Teo Construction Group, has been elected as a council member to the South African Forum of Civil Engineering Contractors, Safsec. She believes that Safsec continues to play a critical role in the construction industry's ongoing efforts to transform. Dr. Ndlovu said her long association with Safsec extended to her role as the president of the Black Business Council in the built environment in 2012 when both Safsec and BBCPE began engaging the construction industry about the so-called voluntary rebuilding program or settlement agreement concluded finally with the government in October 2016. Dr. Ndrovo added that SAFSA continued to play a critical role in the South African construction industry and said the following, I quote, we hardly acknowledge it for that. I think the current structure, including its leadership and constitution, has changed dramatically. We do not give due consideration to the fact that its specific provisions include black uh, people is a huge step. Commenting on the impact that her appointment to Safsec Council would have on hotel construction, Dr. Ndrofu said, it will accelerate our own continued transformation as a truly empowered, all-encompassing, black-owned construction company and commanding the respect of the industry and leading the way forward, a, a close quote. She was indeed a person who would give praise where praise is due. On 7 December last year, she invited me to the year-end function of Muteo Construction. As we're conversing, she pointed me to a group of black engineers with some white guys. And after we had a discussion about what would it take to make sure that black people become truly entrenched in the economy of the country. I said two things are important among others. Sustainability, that when they have companies, government must give them work. And I said diversity, enhancing all the skills of different people, black and white, to use to drive the company. He said, that young man arrived from university as a graduate and we put him on a mentorship program with those guys. Today, they are leading big projects uh, in Mutel. And that is the way uh, 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 to, to go. Uh, program director, allow me to say that Dr. T defied death whilst she was still alive. She phoned me at one time in Alba North, wanting to get some rates for the industry. And I said, Dr. T, make sure you don't travel on that road, because the very road that we build consume us. He said, my brother, I will ensure that at least either in Bloemfontein I take a flight and come back. Now, rewind, fast forward to the untimely death on Saturday. She also, on that day, defied death not to die on the spot, but after she reached hospital and everything else was done to survive. Then reminds me, Chairperson, of William Shakespeare in one of his great works, Julius Caesar, when he said, cowards die many times before their deaths, the valley never tastes of death but once. Of all the wonders I yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, my sister. Farewell, my comrade. Farewell, my confidante. And may the good Lord comfort the family in the belief that her legacy will always live on, and it is up to us to carry the baton and move forward and be an exemplary 
uh, industry company that has truly transformed. I thank you. The family members may take this, uh, these flowers for us. They meant a lot. Thank you. Thank you. They are always pulling one good girl station. Mr. Shakespeare. Mr. Spanda. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, program directors. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I also bring apologies from Dr. Snowy Koza, the group CEO of Megan, who wanted to be here but couldn't be here. And so I'll read a message uh, from the Bigan Group uh, leadership. It is with a heavy heart that I stand here today on behalf of the Bigan Group leadership and team to express our deepest condolences on the untimely and tragic loss of our beloved business partner, Dr. Tandon Logo. At Bigan Group, we had the privilege of forging, of forging a business a relationship with Mateo Group through uh, Dr. Tandy's visionary leadership for her passion to improve in the quality of life of people. She and Dr. Snowy Koza, our group CEO, shared the same passion of improving the quality of life of our people in the country and the continent. In 2015, they conceptualized a woman-led water and sanitation services initiative, which was called Women in Water, we were geared at uh, six things. One, delivering increased socio-economic development impact. Two, mobilizing capability and capacity to deliver large-scale infrastructure. Three, introducing innovative alternative funding solutions. Four, delivering increased social, social economic development and empowerment. Five, ensuring local economic participation, skills development, job creation, poverty alleviation and empowerment of women, and six, establishing agriculture for food security, uh, food security businesses. The journey of WIWA has not been without stumbling blocks, yet Dr. Tandy's faith uh, that soon this initiative would succeed was an indication that she was a fighter who never easily gave up, especially when it came to improving the quality of life of people generally. We know that she has made an unforgettable impact on the lives of many, and the testimonies that we've heard this morning actually demonstrate that. Therefore, leaving a valuable legacy as a caring a physician, and all her successes as a brilliant businesswoman and entrepreneur, we are grateful that we have had the honor of knowing her, and will cherish her memory as a loved and respected and truly vicious uh, business uh, partner. Our thoughts and prayers are with Dr. Tandis' family and friends, the Motel Group, and the other colleagues in the business fraternity. May you find strength and peace during this difficult time. Dr. Uh, Tandy, we, will, we shall continue to keep your legacy going. And also, I think at this particular point in time, it's also important to also reflect on the lives of the other three people that passed on in the same accident. Uh, may their families also find peace uh, and comfort in our prayers. Rest in peace. Thank you for paying attention to the clock. Really appreciate it. I would like to now call upon as we move swiftly, uh, representing African Women Chartered Accountants, representing uh, the President of uh, uh, African Women Accountants, Zama Kanyile, I'd like to call upon Zor Domanas. I feel like asking...
business leaders, colleagues, good afternoon. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, I represent the president of the African Women Children Accountants, an organization that was formed 17 years ago to increase and improve and promote uh, women children accountants in the country. I, earlier, Judy mentioned that women don't support each other. I'm proud to say that when we started this organization, there were less than 100 women children accountants, black women children accountants, and we formed to only 28% of the black population of children accountants. And today, we are about more than 3,200, and we are more than 52% of the black population general accountants. I think a lot of people went to do this work, and I'm proud to say that Tandy, Dr. T, was part, especially later after we, we nominated her and awarded her the, the, the Women of Substance in 19, sorry, in 28, 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice that stood firm for women empowerment has been stilled. And so, the heart breaks. We have lost one of the most courageous and profoundly influential women in our times. Her life moved and touched many of us. Words simply failed to, to talk, to say anything during this tragic time. My president, uh, Zama Kanyele, could come. The family of AWCA sends our condolences to the family and the business community at large. Tandi was revered as a national treasure. She achieved and did more than could be expected of any human being. As I said earlier, in 2017, AWCA honored her with their highest award as Women of Substance. After being awarded, she invited all of us in her house. And she actually asked us how can she contribute to our advancement, to, uh, to the causes of the African Women Channel Accountant. Since then, unlike any other Women of Substance, she's been with us, working hard. She did not only give her money, she gave her time. She was very active and attended almost all the AWCA functions. In 2017, she launched the inaugural AWCA fundraising golf day. And we have been having this golf day this year, it was in March. And as AWCA, we intend to ask the permission of the family to name this golf day a Dr. Tandy Lovu. AWCA annual fundraising golf day. It was a joy to interact with her during her reign of, of, of uh, women of substance. She loved us. We loved her as AWCA family. She made a huge difference as an astute businesswoman she was. She loved attending our functions. The last one she attended was our annual Women of Substance function on the 1st of August this year. When I was appointed chairman of Total South Africa, we used to attend the Women's Forum in France, Deauville. And uh, Tandy was part of this uh, annual uh, journey to France. I have many fond memories of those trips. Besides attending the women issues, they were filled with joy, laughter, and of course, lots of shopping. You know Tandy loved her beautiful clothes. Tandy had a flair for beautiful things. She was always vibrant and warm. On that 1st of August, she called me and said, Zodwa, next year we're going to Paris. Please make sure that we get women up and money. I want to travel business class and we want we have to stay in the best hotels in Paris. That was her last words to me. And Paris next day, it will not be. 
we are so saddened by this great loss. The great Greek philosopher Pluto, when he, talk about, when he talks about death, he says, we live in a shadow world. The real world is yet to come. Where we die no more and where we cry no more. Good night, my dearest friend, sister and comrade. See you in the morning at the rising of the sun in the next world. Thank you. Uncle Sam, I feel like the entire country, all of us just need a hug. So many deaths, so many negative headlines, we just need a hug. Maybe you can just high five a person sitting next to you and uh, ensure that everyone is awake just in case some are falling asleep. Thank you, thank you very much, Susodon, uh, for reminding us, which was this time to be Hindu Sam. She always just looked absolutely amazing. And uh, those are memories, fond memories that are left with us. I'd like to now call upon Ms. Nguli Bukhoba, followed by Ms. Titindi Moshweu. Ms. Bukhoba is going to be representing the South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners as the president. We're still on that presidential train. So, Womatla. And followed by uh, Ms. Titindi Moshwe, uh, who's from National Home Builders Registration Council as an executive manager. I was hoping that we have to carry you up this thing. Thank you very much, program directors. Thank you to everybody that's here. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I recognize the politicians and all our government uh, representatives. I recognize all of our business leaders, even our president, uh, I see he has already walked out of the room. I recognize the Ndlofu family, um, even though they were not able to be here with us. And I thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak here today. Um, I am a vice president uh, to the BBC for the professionals. And I'm really glad that last week Friday, when we had the lunch with Mum Tandi, I was actually able to thank her in person rather than in absentia. I was able to say to her that, uh, you know, as, as you know, people who are so inspirational and such uh, leaders in our country as she was, you don't imagine that uh, they see you or they, they even know your name, you know, but her humility and generosity taught me that no one was below her. And if there's nothing else that we can take from her, it's that leadership of service and that leadership of humility. Umam Tandi at the uh, elections the BBC last year um, actually walked up to me and she said if I do get nominated to take any seat on the National Office Bearers I will pass it on to you and indeed I stand here today and I have her to thank and I have big shoulders that I stand on and I'd like to echo the words of Uru Judy when she said women actually are raising others who come behind them. And she's a living example of that, Judy herself, and Umam Tandi did that, and I'm, I'm testimony to, to that having happened, and I'm really privileged to have had the time to be able to thank her. Now, last week, Friday, was very, very special. Um, it was so special that Saturday was an absolute uh, devastating moment in all our lives as we stand here. As the president of the South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners, we are eternally grateful to leaders such as Umam Tandi, who even when she had her own successes, never forget, forgot about the importance of ensuring that everybody else rises as she rose. Um, as the South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners, we are sisters or brothers to the construction industry and we actually advocate for transformation in the ownership of property 
because it's one thing to be called by a white developer to come and do the construction on their behalf and you walk away, you know. Uh, while we appreciate the productive means, including and involving black people, we also are strong advocates for ownership of property in the hands of black people, and that is what we stand for. And I, for one, am completely touched by her life, how she lived her, li how she lived her life, how she led, how she served, and um, ooh, 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 another stalwart reminded me when we were at home on Sunday to say, Mam Tandi definitely believed in you. So please make sure I was put, and I really sincerely hope that I can look up to them and be able to go to them for support in whatever role I will continue to play uh, within the business spheres and in raising our communities. Now, Mam Tandi worked at Barabana at the same time as my mother, and when I spoke to her about my mom on Friday, she said, sure, we didn't know uh, Mam Kuzwai, but what they did have in common, while well, my mother was a social worker, she went and did a master's in development planning, and when she chose my field of study and said, you will go and study architecture, she actually went and registered for me. She said, I never want you to, I want you to be in a sector that is constructive, that will build conducive living environments for our communities so that they seldom have to encounter the health services. And I'm truly, truly um, saddened by her passing. I have flowers at my table, at the entrance of my table, at my house, and they are from her lunch. And all I could think of when I looked at those flowers was, life is exactly like that. to actually give a round of applause. Thank you so much for that time message. Uh, I was hoping that unfortunately we're running out of time or we ran out of time completely. Ms. Um, Moshwebu, it looks like we're moving right along. I would like to speak or uh, call upon Mr. Andy Le um, He's spoken already. Sister Tina was Major Situate is done. Uh, maybe Mr. Dupri Vilagasi, uh, almost a showstopper, uh, representing the National Business uh, Caucus and BBC as the president. I finally see Paramis Mr. President, you Paramis uh, one of those icons in our country that have just given so much about to bring and uh, mentored so many in, in the business fraternity. There are refreshments outside. Uh, please do not leave without grabbing something to eat.
Thank you for being a program director as long as I can remember life. Uh, thank you for the other program director. I do not see Tolani Kwega. Uh, I don't know why you put me at the end because I wanted to say something. But all the good things that have been said, believe them more timely. She was one of those standards. Regrettably, she died on a woman's month. But I want to be different from all the other people that we've listened to today, uh, because I'm also different. Um, I just want to give you a message uh, on my way coming from where I come from this morning in a place called Middlebrook. But also, uh, some of us at times tend to get what other people don't get. I have a message uh, from, for you from Tandy. Uh, instead of talking about her achievement and the great works and other things, I just want to give you this message, a very short message, and I hope it will stay in your hearts and you stay in your minds and you'll remember it. Let me go peacefully, my people. I have broken the bars of this cage, for our God is calling me. The sky is clear and the sea is calm and the boat is ready to sail. Do not delay this journey. Let my body rest with those resting. Let my dreams and my body awake with the dawn so that my soul is rested. Let your souls embrace me with mine and give me the kiss of hope. Let not the drop of sorrow or bitterness fall upon my body. Least the flowers and the grass refuse their nourishment. Do not shed misery upon my hand, for they may grow thorns upon my grave. Do not draw lines of agony upon my forehead, since the days of slavery are gone, and my soul seeks the freedom of the skies. Do not call the priest to be on my bedside, for his incarceration will not save me. If I were a sinner, nor will I not be led to heaven, even if I was innocent. The will of humanity cannot change the wills of God, as the astrologer cannot change the cause of the stars. For the wind may pass and rid them and refuse to carry the dust of my bones to the grave prairies of life. I loved you all when I was here, and I will, leave, I will love you even in the life where I'm going to live. I shall continue to love you when I am dead, and my soul shall always look over you and protect you. Do not call me a physician, for you might extend my existence in this life with this medicine. Be steady, be happy for me, and let me go. I thank you. We really had a tail end of our programming. Um, I have not seen Mr. Mkari. Mr. Mkari should be the next. Uh, Makwari is not here. So if he's not here, can I just see if I've, I have, we have not by any mistake left anyone who is here. Is there anyone felt that she was on the program you might have missed? <coughs> Uh, if not, I am going to call a very tall man called Gregor Mufugen to come and give us a vote of Dante. Uh, from me, thank you very much. And uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Kubega, <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to, to look after. Thank you. Ya itsebe elamo le motsebe hi le motsebe e hi mao akanda tula
preach. <laughs> I will not preach. <laughs> but just to say, Lema Emu Eglin Paul, Moka Mid Yarna Utseba Selvis Foka. He has put us in this situation. He knew that today we will have conversed here to beat our final farewell to our beloved Dr. T. He knew that today our hearts will be broken and shattered as they are. It is him who will mend those hearts. Kiena atalisa to the destination where we will be yet. Muka midi ya rena otseba Amen. Let me do our vote of thanks. We want to thank the Hope Restoration Ministries for opening their doors and allowing us to have this memorial service today. And we want to thank the men of the Lord, Reverend S. Simatibuna, for opening the doors of the church. We want to give a vote of thanks to the presidents of the BBC organizations that were here today that were coming to give us the words of comfort, including the president of the BBC himself, as well as the president of the Black Business Council in the built environment, Mohambe Paul Hole. We want to also thank all the organizations that came today to support us uh, and all the speakers that spoke on behalf of these organizations. As you are well aware, this is too long to mention. We want to also thank the organizing team that was put together between the BBC and the BBCP. <coughs> Uh, made up of uh, Maggie Lemteto, this, uh, the summit president, and Dr. Haike Matabani, the CEO of the Black Business Council, Dr. Mongani Manizela, who is also a member of the BBC. We want to thank you very much for your efforts and the work that you've put in to make sure that we have a successful memorial uh, today. We also want to thank the marketing and communications team from the BBCBE. Guys, thank you very much for burning the midnight oil and making sure that we put this program together. I would also want to extend our gratitude to the staff at the BBC. Thank you very much, guys, for being with us today and for your support as well. Me, finally, I would like to thank uh, the Tswani Gospel Choir. Thank you very much, guys, for being available at such short notice. We spoke to them only yesterday and they said that they'll be here to be with us. Thank you very much for being here. And finally, finally, Mr. and Mrs. Kubega. <laughs> Thank you very much, program directors, for the wonderful job done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Some might call him Gregory Porter. As we conclude, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for indulging us with your time. I know that Mrs. Tandi, wherever she may be, Dr. Tandi Klug appreciates the time that you spent with us. I'd like to leave you with these words, even though I'm thanked already, as I'm supposed to have chided. But please ponder on this. Let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul that has been set free? Miss me a little, but not for long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the master plan, a step on the right, on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends we know. Laugh at all the things that we used to laugh at. Miss me, but let me go. Let's let her go. May her soul rest peacefully. Thank you very much. There are refreshments outside and please drive home safely. And remember to love the ones we're with. We're living on borrowed time. Thank you. Okay. It's done now.